Hi everyone! Before I begin today's guide, I'd like to announce that last week we passed 100 subscribers. Yay! <laughs> that might not be much for some, but I never expected to reach that number so fast. It feels like only a few weeks ago when I had 5 followers and I was impressed anyone wanted to watch these videos. So thank you so much to all of you, your support and interest in these videos mean the world to me. I plan to continue to make interesting and accessible videos and guides while I develop my editing skills. How many of you caught my little animated text in last week's video? I'm very proud of that one. Today I'll be going over the Legion artifact weapon appearances for priests. With Shadowlands I've become more interested in this class in the healing role, which I haven't tackled much till now. Usually I prefer to hit things. Priests have a very classic aesthetic, except for the Shadow Priest, which I think is an incredibly interesting spec that I haven't seen in any other games I've played. Usually, Shadow Magic is reserved for a mage or a sorceress. For this reason, and for the fact that Shadow Priests get a weapon which plays a major role in the Battle for Azeroth expansion, I'll begin this guide with this pick. Salatath, Blade of the Black Empire, is connected to the Old Gods and has a mind of its own. As such, Shadow Priests must take great care not to listen to its treacherous whispers when wielding it, as they did in Legion. This artifact weapon is a dagger and is accompanied by the secrets of the void in your offhand when you equip it. I could tell you the whole story about Salatath if you allowed me, but for now I'll simply read what the artifact book has to say about the blade. An ancient and terrible force trembles deep within Salatath, Blade of the Black Empire. Though this dagger can serve as a powerful tool for those who wield shadow magic, tread cautiously. Salatath has a mind of its own. Ignore its maddening whispers. Do not trust the lies it spins. Take from it what you need, but always remember that the dark presence in the blade is not your ally. This has got to be my favorite artifact weapon out of them all, and I was so excited to see more of it, so much of it in fact, in the BFA expansion. It's actually one of the reasons why I've grown so fond of Shadow Priests. Shadow Priests first unlock Salatath, Blade of the Black Empire, in its base blue tint when they embark on their class hall campaign and choose to pursue this artifact weapon. Afterwards, the other three colors are unlocked as follows. When obtaining one of the pillars of creation and returning it to your class hall, you unlock the purple tint. Each pillar is a reward for completing the entire questline in one of the Broken Isle zones. The Ages of Agrimar from Stormheim, the Hammer of Kasgoth from High Mountain, the Tears of Elun from Velshirar, the Tight Stone of Golganeth from Azuna, or the Eye of Amunsul from Suramar. The green tint of Salatath will be unlocked when you recover Light's Hut and bring it to your class hall. You begin this questline by talking to Katgar and Dalaran after obtaining your artifact weapon. And the gold tint is unlocked when you complete your first major campaign in your priest class hall campaign. Embrace of the Old Gods is the second appearance you unlock for Salatath. The green and purple tints are unlocked when you complete your entire class hall campaign and get the achievement Forged for Basil. When you reach level 50 on your priest character, you automatically unlock the golden tint. And the turquoise tint will be unlocked when you complete the archaeology achievement This Side Up. To do this, you have to complete 8 out of 10 rare archaeology projects in the Broken Isle zones. Each project is on a 2 week rotation and can be picked up from your archaeology trainer in Dalaran. Be careful not to miss a project or you might have to wait for a while. I want to underline that this achievement is account wide. However, I've experienced that it's taken a while for the appearance to show up on other characters and sometimes you have to switch realms and log into a character there, if you can, for it to register. I apologize if anyone's been confused or have had trouble with this. The Fallen Blade is the artifact appearance associated with the Balance of Power questline. Here, I want to underline that the Balance of Power is not account Y, though I really, really think it should be. I believe I've insinuated in one of my previous videos that balance of power is account wide and that I really want to apologize for. I have noted my mistake in the notes section below the video. 
The balance of power questline is tedious and even more so when you have to do it in all your characters. However, I still do think it's worth it. As a Shadow Priest, you unlock the red tint of the Fallen Blade with the achievement improving on history at the end of the Balance of Power questline. After completing this, you can unlock the other three tints of this weapon appearance as well. For the green tint, you must kill eight world bosses under Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The purple tint is unlocked when you complete and time a 15 plus Mythic Keystone dungeon in the current season, that's currently a Shadowlands dungeon. And by earning the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, which requires a list of Legion dungeon achievements, you unlock the brown tint of the Fallen Blade. Vision of Madness is my favorite Salatath appearance, so I'm really glad I'm no longer afraid of PvP as I used to be, because this weapon appearance is tied to PvP on our levels. The purple tint of Vision of Madness is unlocked when you reach on a level 10. At on a level 30, you unlock the green tint. The turquoise tint is a reward for reaching on a level 50, and by on a level 80, you unlock the gorgeous white tint. By completing the Mage Tower challenge back in Legion, Shadow Priests were rewarded with a Twisted Reflection appearance in green. The Mage Tower was a feat of strength and is no longer doable. Thus, for those of us who didn't complete it back then, Twisted Reflection is unfortunately not obtainable. However, for those who did complete the Mage Tower as a Shadow Priest and unlocked the base tint, you can still today unlock the three other tints. To do so, you do the following. For the Golden Tint, you have to complete 10 different Legion Dungeons. You can run these alone or in a group and on any difficulty of your choosing. For the Purple Tint, you must win 10 rated battlegrounds after unlocking Twisted Reflection. And for the Blue Tint, you must defeat Kill Jaden on Heroic Difficulty. Claw of Nasoth is... interesting. <laughs> that dangling eyeball sure is something else and symbolizes the old god very adequately. This hidden artifact appearance is unlocked with the item Claw of Nasoth, making it seem to me that what you end up wielding is actually Nasoth's claw. If he has any of those. Does he? The text accompanying the item reads this. Eyes blinding. Flesh pulsing. It is very much still alive. Lovely. The item drops from Ilganoth in the Emerald Nightmare, the first raid released for the Legion expansion. The drop rate is rather low at 0.6% however, so it does require some patience and luck. Luckily, obtaining the item is all that is needed for you to unlock the Claw of Nasoth for your Shadow Priest character. After unlocking the base red tint of Claw of Nasoth, you unlock the green tint by completing 10 different Legion dungeons. You can do this by yourself or in a group on any difficulty. The purple tint is a reward for completing 200 world quests anywhere between Legion and Shadowlands. And lastly, the red tint will be unlocked once you kill a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction. Holy priests are as classic as priests come. Holy light and smite are base spells and this class is all about glowing light and angels which I actually appreciate and like in its honesty, even if it's not up my alley at all. Holy Priests get the staff Ture, Beacon of the Naru, as their artifact weapon. If you know just a little bit about the Naru, I probably don't need to say much about Ture. However, still, I'd like to read what the artifact book has to say about this artifact weapon. Ture is one of the purest physical embodiments of the light in existence. The dynamic energies that flow through this artifact can heal wounds both physical and mental. They can inspire hope in times of overwhelming darkness and fortify timid hearts with courage. But perhaps Tudor's greatest strength is what we can learn from its past. If there's one thing to take away from its history, it is this. Even one brave soul wielding the light can save the lives of thousands. They probably could have done a little more with the various appearances for Tudor, if you ask me, but it's still a very pretty staff. You unlock Tudor in this base blue tint when you begin your class war campaign as a priest and choose to pursue this artifact weapon. The yellow tint will be unlocked once you recover one of the Pillars of Creation from the Broken Isle zones. By recovering Light's Hut and bringing it to your class hall, you unlock the purple tint. And the red tint is a reward for completing the first, out of several, major class war campaign in your class hall. 
Banner of Purity is unlocked once you complete your entire Priest Class Hall campaign with the achievement Forge for Battle. Both the blue and purple tints are unlocked with Forge for Battle. The red tint is automatically unlocked when you reach level 50 on your Priest character. And by completing the Archaeology achievement this side up, you unlock the green tint of Banner of Purity. Keeper of Light is the weapon artifact appearance associated with the Balance of Power questline for Holy Priests. By completing the questline with the achievement Improving on History, you unlock the golden tint of Keeper of Light. Afterwards, you unlock the blue tint by killing 8 world bosses around the Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The purple tint is a reward to you when you complete and time a 15 plus mythic keystone dungeon in the current season for the keystone master achievement, after you've completed balance of power. And the red tint of keeper of light is unlocked with the achievement glory of the legion hero. If you complete this before improving on history, the weapon appearance should show up for you as soon as you complete improving on history. Embrace of the Void is a darker version of Tudor and leans towards the shadows that are found in some priests, though hidden away deeper or completely in holy priests. You unlock this artifact appearance through PvP on other levels. Remember that other levels are account wide, so you don't have to do PvP on your priest if you prefer another class. The purple tint of Embrace of the Void is unlocked when you reach on level 10. By on level 30, you unlock the yellow tint. The turquoise tint is unlocked at on level 50, and the reward for reaching on a level 80 is Embrace of the Void in its red tint. Memory of Argus was in Legion unlocked with the Mage Tower challenge. As I keep mentioning, the challenge is locked and is no longer doable. But for those of you who completed in Bagging Legion and unlocked the blue tint of Memory of Argus, you can still today unlock the three other tints. By completing 10 different Legion dungeons by yourself or in a group, you unlock the golden tint of Memory of Argus. The purple tint is a reward for winning 10 rated battlegrounds after unlocking Memory of Argus. And when you defeat Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty, you unlock the red tint of this artifact appearance. The hidden artifact appearance for Holy Priests is Crest of the Lightborn. And finally, a more unique appearance for Tudor. You unlock this appearance with the item Staff of the Lightborn. Unlike the Shadow Priests, you do need to do a little more to unlock the hidden artifact appearance for Holy Priests. Staff of the Lightborn is created by combining Crest of the Lightborn and Rod of the Ascended. Crest of the Lightborn drops from Hirja in Halls of Valor and has a 0.4% drop chance, which I think is too low. <clears throat> and Rod of the Ascended is bought from Valdemar's Stormseeker here, but only once you're exalted with the Valishar. Once you combine the two items, you get the Staff and unlock the Crest of the Lightborn appearance in gold. After this, you unlock the cream color by completing 30 Legion dungeons. You can do this by yourself or in a group, and the difficulty is up to you. The turquoise tint is given to you once you complete 200 world quests anyone as Wrath after unlocking Crest of the Lightborn. And finally, by killing a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction, you unlock the blue tint of this hidden artifact appearance. The Disciplined Priest has received a lot of love in Shadowlands, and that love has drawn my attention to the spec. Even though I've been warned it's probably not a spec for the inexperienced healer. The staff, Light's Wrath, is named rather appropriately, befitting the punishing nature of Disciplined Priest's spells and way of healing. Even the weapon's description clearly shows the contrast between the mercifulness of Holy Priests and the exact opposite of Disciplined Priests. For Discipline, mercy and nobility is not enough. Before you took up Light's Wrath, many pious warriors and devout priests tried to control it and failed. Let their shortcomings serve as a lesson and a warning. Noble intentions are not enough to harness this staff's formidable power. You must sharpen your focus to a blade's edge and make your will as unyielding as steel. For the moment your discipline falters, this weapon will claim you as it has all others. The artifact weapon is unlocked in space blue tint as you begin your class hall campaign and choose to pursue the weapon. The purple tint will be unlocked once you recover one of the pillars of creation. By recovering light's heart and bringing it to your class hall, you unlock the red tint of light's wrath. And after completing the first major campaign in your class hall, you unlock the golden tint of light's wrath. 
Crest of the Redeemed makes Light's Wrath look a little more elaborate. You unlock this appearance in gold and in green by completing your entire Priest class hall campaign and get the achievement Forge for Battle. Red Tint will automatically be unlocked when you reach level 50 on your Priest character. And lastly, but not quite as easily, the blue tint of Crest of the Redeemed is unlocked when you get the Archaeology achievement this side up. The achievement is account wide and only needs to be done on one of your characters. Chalice of Light is unlocked via the Balance of Power questline. Do note, you just need to do this questline on one spec and it should unlock the Balance of Power associated appearances across all specs of your character. By getting the achievement Improving on History at the end of Balance of Power, you unlock the base golden tint of Chalice of Light. After unlocking this, you can obtain the green tint by killing 8 world bosses for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. By completing and timing a 15 plus mythic keystone dungeon in the current season, you unlock the blue tint of Chalice of Light. And the yellow tint is a reward for completing the Glory of the Legion hero achievement, which requires a list of Legion dungeon achievements. Eternal Vigil looks like one big candlestick and is unlocked with PvP on the levels. The pink tint is unlocked at on a level 10. At on a level 30, you unlock the green tint. The blue tint is a reward for reaching on a level 50. And finally, at on a level 80, you unlock the golden tint of Eternal Vigil. The Mage Tower Challenge in Legion rewarded skilled discipline priests with the Ascended Watch artifact appearance. Today, the challenge is no longer doable and thus the appearance is locked and cannot be obtained. Those that did obtain the appearance in this base gold and black tint in Legion can still, however, unlock the rest of the tints today. By completing 10 different Legion dungeons, you unlock the gold and white tint. You can choose to do the dungeons alone or in a group on any difficulty. The pink tint is unlocked by winning 10 rated battlegrounds after unlocking Ascended Watch, and by defeating Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty after unlocking Ascended Watch, you're rewarded with the silver tint of this artifact appearance. Tomekeeper's Spire is a rather interesting hidden artifact appearance for Discipline Priests. The Book on a Stick is unlocked with the item Writings of the End. Writings of the End is obtained by combining 12 tomes collected from around Azeroth. It should be easy for you to get started in current retail. Back in Legion you had to reach Artifact Knowledge Level 4, but today that's not relevant and you simply go and talk to Archivist Inkforge in your Priest class hall. Once you start the conversation, you have to seem interested in your choices, in what Inkforge is telling you, and if you are, he will give you the item The Annals of Light and Shadow, the first tome, and instruct you to seek out the other 11. Here is the list of the 11 other tomes and where to find them. Combine all the tomes and turn them into Inkforge, who will then give you the item Writings of the End, which will unlock the Tome Keeper's Spire in Space Pink Tint. Afterwards, by completing 30 Legion Dungeons on any difficulty, you unlock the green tint of this artifact appearance. The red tint of Tome Keeper's Spire is unlocked by completing 200 world quests between Legion and Shadowlands. Just go wild. And finally, the golden tint of the hidden artifact appearance is rewarded to you once you kill a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction. And with that, we're done with priests, which means there's only two parts left of this series. Thank you so much to those of you who's followed me through this journey, and to those who's just found me and decided to show support. I'm so thankful to all of you. Special shout out too to those who comment with their experiences and tips in the comments. It's so helpful, both to me and to others who are hunting for artifact appearances. Thank you so much. If any of you have something in WoW that you're struggling with or wish to see a guide of, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'm currently planning a list of future projects and I'm very excited about it. Next week I'll have a look at monks and their legion artifact weapons. That way, we can end everything off with a blast that is druids, their 4 specs and 96 artifact appearances. Yay! Till then, all of you, I wish you the best of health and luck in your hunt for Legion artifact appearances. Bye!